Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today, we are going to be taking a spoiler-free look at Kaiju number 8, chapter 88. So, this chapter just blasted right past. It was slightly shorter than our current average, clocking in at a mere... 20, uh, 17 pages. So this is a slightly shorter chapter, but given the awesome chapters we've had previously, that makes sense. It's also, well, an awkward chapter. In of itself, for what it is, it is an excellent chapter, grade A chapter. But after the really emotionally wrenching chapters we've had recently, it is kind of a letdown because ultimately this is a book in a chapter. We're wrapping up the previous interaction, moving on to the next interaction, and I imagine just because of the way that the panels pace themselves out, the amount of time spent on the next story arc feels very awkward. It's just like, you know, when, you, when you're doing something repetitively and you come to the end and you have to break the pattern, this is... Yeah, probably, I have to say, the most disappointing chapter that actually was a chapter. Not counting, of course, when you get in a surprise art chapter. But, again, there, nothing in of itself. It's an excellent example of a kind of booking chapter. It's just because of which panels we get of the concluding story and of the next story. It, it just feels a little awkward. But there will, there will be no spoilers, but I'm going to tell you to go check out the links below the video to get yourself a copy of my book, Humans Are Weird... <laughs> flying Sparks, Flying Sparks. The pre-order campaign for Flying Sparks is in, is in the link below the vid vid video, as well as the Humans Are Weird books. I got some really great feedback on my video for the campaign, on my trailer video. So I went and I completely redid the trailer video, completely changed the format. And if you want to go look at that you can follow it's there it, you just follow the link to the pre-launch page and you'll be able to see the trailer that is a temporary trailer and I'm hiring somebody to do a proper reading of the new trailer script all right that being said chapter 88 Matsumoto in this chapter is making use of a concept in storytelling that we've all kind of recognized. We've all gotten attached to some secondary character who was not the main focus. Maybe the Lancer, maybe, maybe the comedic guy, and then we go online and find out nearly everybody's really into that character. And it turns out that this is just a common thing. You can find it on TV tropes. It's when a mysterious secondary character character becomes more popular than the main character. Data from T Star Trek TNG, Spock from Star Trek TOS. Why is this? Why do these secondary characters become so popular? I believe it's because they are undeveloped. Because they are mysterious, because there's nothing we know about them, your brain immediately wants to, your brain fills it in. Now, because they are one of the heroes of the story, we're, we're predisposed to like them. And the main character, we see everything that's going on. There's very little for our imaginations to fill in. But we can populate the secondary character however we want to. And in the undefined reaches of our imaginations, that secondary character, whether it's Hei from Yu Yu Hakusho, or Spock from Star Trek, we can fill in what we want him to be in, in a sort of very vague, low-resolution detail. So we don't have to worry about the precise artistic execution that the actual artist does. This can be the perfect character in our imaginations. But the moment you bring that character forward, put the spotlight on them, they just become a regular main character. So those secondary characters fill in a spot where we imagine them to be the perfect character and because we never actually have to see them front and center on the screen that imagination can go on for as long as we want it to and we build these entire head cannons around characters which can lead to better or worse reactions in the fandom but why am i talking about this I think that what Matsumoto has done, Matsumoto was given, came up, either came up with an idea or was given the assignment, working within the confines of the Shonen Jump manga, 
he has to produce a Shonen Jump manga that's very restrictive. So Matsumoto has been finding these ways to work around those restrictions to give us something really great. And I think this chapter, chapter 88, is a really great example of how Matsumoto, either by instinct or by deliberate design, I don't know which, it'd be really impressive if it was by deliberate design, has harvested our expectations of manga and the natural fan reactions to stories and use them to his advantage. Matsumoto knows that Hiai was probably the most popular character in Yu Yu Hakusho, that Spock was probably the most ca popular character in Star Trek. That secondary character are the ones that your audience is really going to get attached to. So Matsumoto didn't just give us one second dairy character for our imaginations to work with. He gave us an entire division's worth of characters. We have Director General Iso Shinamaya, Vice Captain Hakari, that entire crew they had, the Captain of the Fourth Division, Itami, you can tell that these characters, there is an entire Shonen Jump series in the background that we are never going to get to see other than through these snips and backgrounds. And, we, and we've and we been talking about this, Grim Saber and I used to talk about this all the time. We want to know more about Hakari and Iso and their courtship and their training. But we want to know that because they are the secondary characters. Had the series been about them, we'd be saying that about the secondary characters of that series. It's just human nature to want what's behind the second door once you've opened the first door. And by doing this, Matsumoto has essentially created two series. Two entirely separate series. Kaiju number eight, focused on Kafka and Mina and Kokoru in this generation, which is subject to all the restrictions of a real manga. All the restrictions of a manga that has been fully brought to fruition. All the lines are drawn, everything's down on paper. And there are massive restrictions to that. Everybody complains about this specific detail and that specific detail, but nobody's complaining about Hikari or Iso's story because in our imaginations, it is the perfect story. We can make of it whatever we want. So we... And what Matsumoto is doing is just, just feeding us breadcrumbs about the, in this chapter we get breadcrumbs, I don't think this is a spoiler, about this intense friendship, this bond of brothers between Iso Shinamaya and director and Baldi, uh, Tommy I think his name is. And you can just see their relationship. And that relationship was obvious from the first time we saw them interacting around that table. They're talking to each other. And just the way, the things that Iso allows Itami to say to him without, without a negative response showed that level of trust and camaraderie. And it was something that almost all the reviewers noticed, again, from that first panel of their interactions. And in this chapter, we get another look at that quiet warrior friendship that they have. And this is a clue that allows us to start, again, building that secondary manga series in our minds, behind and beyond what we see in the current manga series. And I really, really do think that this is an action of Matsumoto's genius. Again, I don't know whether this is deliberate, as in he carefully crafted this, which would be true genius, or if it's instinctive, which is another form of genius. But Matsumoto ha is giving us essentially two manga at once. The one that's focused on the screen, that is done with beautiful art and technical precision. And the only thing you can say about against it is that it is a perfectly ordinary Shonen Jump manga. And so there's not going to be any huge surprises in it. But then we have the second manga where everything happens, where the main characters do die, where the things that you can't have happen in the sh in the fully formed shonen manga do happen in the background. We have massive citizen death. We have failure. We have defeat. We have main character death. But because it's all happening in the imaginations of the audience and not on paper in ink, Matsumoto's getting away with it. So that manga that we want that's different from all the other manga, that actually has the guts to kill off main characters, we're seeing it, but it's in the background. It's in the negative space of Kaiju number eight. 
And then let's just talk about my one real disappointment. I was really, really hoping for a Mina chapter. And that does not say anything negative about this chapter or even the story as a whole. But I was hoping to see what Mina was up to. I did a whole video on it yesterday. But, okay. And man, this chapter just blasted by so fast. We get some really heartfelt Jin Narumi, which is, and now this is tricky to get a really heartfelt emotional scene with a character like, like Narumi without pushing it into Narm or Cheesy. That takes skill. And again, it's just a classic shonen scene that takes up two and a half, three pages. But it's done with skill. You don't think about the skill. You don't notice the skill. You, you would notice it if the scene was cheesy or narmy. But you don't because it's just done with that much skill. And then comes my major issue with the pacing. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight full pages of the next arc. And I, ha, I, I would have preferred it to be like two pages. But then the last arc wound up in this. I can totally see why Matsumoto did this, but I would have liked it if there was a little bit less of the next beat, if we'd gotten a chance to see this. But anyway, as I said, it's, it's a slightly awkward chapter because of how you have two story arcs bookending. And then we get to see just a really awesome combat scene. The art is fantastic. And we get to see Matsumoto's favorite character moving. And again, Matsumoto is just brilliant at drawing movement. I genuinely don't know. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I genuinely don't know if the anime will portray the movement better than these still panels. All right. But what do you think, my wonderful viewers? Do is, was this chapter a little awkward? Hit that like and subscribe button to tell me what you think. And peace out, my wonderful viewers. Deep within the forest, trees walk. On the mountains, boulders dance. In the skies, stars sing. And within, a human heart is breaking. Naturally, the park ranger was tremendously annoyed at all of this. Flying Sparks, Volume 1. 100,000 words and another look into the McCarty family as aliens and first contact play across their lives. Available on Indiegogo for pre-order through June, and the crowdfund Indiegogo campaign will be up and running through July of 2023. Dragons! Aliens! Check out the link below the video to go get yourself a pre-order of a Flying Sparks Volume 1. If you pre-order before July 1st, you will also get a free copy of Dying Embers, the, the original book published in 2024.